pause, stop. This is dev server footage, stats can change, keep this in mind, what you're about to see is all subject to change. Let's go. We're going to try and keep it as short as possible since there's a lot to talk about. The M1 Abrams doesn't really need introductions, does it? You know what this tank is. So let's get right into the meat of it. The M1 Abrams has a stabilized 105mm gun, which is pretty much the same as on the M60. It does not have an autoloader. This gun does have extremely good handling, with the turret traversing at 40 degrees per second and the gun having an elevation range of 20 degrees to negative 10 degrees. Now how is a tier 5 gun supposed to work in tier 6? Actually quite easy, two things. Very fast reload, good ammo. Stock you have a choice between two shells, APFSDS with 360 mm of penetration and just under 1500 m per second of velocity, as well as a heat FS shell with 400 mm of penetration and roughly around 1200 m per second of velocity. Both the shells being completely free. At tier 1 you can unlock a hash shell which is identical to all the other 105 mm hash shells. At tier 2 you can unlock a smoke shell and at tier 4 you can unlock the Big Daddy, APF SDS shell with 415mm of penetration and a muzzle velocity just above 1500m per second. This shell however is very expensive at 1600 silver lines per shot. Besides the main gun you also have a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun and on the turret top you have a 50 cal to defend yourself against aircraft and unarmored targets. As for equipment, as I've mentioned before, the gun is stabilized quite well. You have also the options to unlock a laser rangefinder, which does speed up your rangefinding vastly and also increases your range to about 5 kilometers. You also have the option to unlock engine smoke, as well as smoke grenades, as well as the smoke shell. Making the Abrams, I believe, to be the only tank that has all three methods of smoke generation available to it. This is a 420 Blazer tank. And of course you also get the option to unlock artillery. Propulsion is handled by a 1500 horsepower turbine engine, propelling the tank to a top speed of 72 km per hour forwards and 40 km per hour backwards. The tank does weigh 54.4 tons, making it on the heavier side, although it does have a 28 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio, quite similar to the Kampfpanzer. This tank is very good across the rain, very very good indeed. The suspension handles it really quite nicely. It also has very fast steering, in fact it kind of feels like driving a tank in arcade mode. That said, you do have a slightly slower acceleration than the Kampfpanzer and for example the Leopard 2K. Or at least you should. Now for what this tank is most known about, the armor. Yes, the Abrams does get composite armor, no, it is not invincible. The lower plate and the turret front both offer 318mm of protection against kinetic ammo, as well as 650mm against chemical ammo, which essentially results in the Abrams being very strong against heat, heat FS, HGMs of most kinds, but at the same time kind of weak against high pen APFSDS. To give you a couple of examples, the new Cobra AT gem that's featured on the new T64B can not penetrate the M1 Abrams from the front anywhere, but the Leopard 2K's stock heat FS shell with 650mm of penetration can't pen the turret, but it can pen the lower plate. An interesting quirk of the tank is the upper plate, which is angled extremely and as such results in an auto bounce of pretty much everything, but is only 38mm thick and has no composite armor underneath it. This turns the M1 Abrams particularly weak to one-shot kills from high caliber HE shells. I'm going to aim it right there. Got it. Yes! Yes! Confirmed. The M1 Abrams is shit. Sturmpanzer German Engineering is the best thing ever created. <laughs> so, how does the Abrams perform, finally? Actually, very, very well. This is a very, very mobile tank. And it also has good working armor. The gun is also decent enough, really. It has a very fast reload and decent ammo choices. It even has a 50 caliber machine gun to deal with uh, aircraft and unarmored targets. But of course the tank is completely overhyped. This is not the invincible, all-powerful tank that people are making it out to be. 
Let's compare to the other three top MBTs that are being added in this patch. The Leopard 2K, the T64B and the Challenger 1. Arguably, the Abrams actually has the weakest gun out of the bunch. Yes, it does have a very fast reload, but none of the shells can actually penetrate the T64B's upper frontal plate. It might also have some troubles with the Challenger, so long as that thing isn't exposing its lower frontal plate. Now, before you write in the comments, yes, I know, I know, the Challenger had awful ammo selection, but I am pretty sure that was just a placeholder on the dev server. I do believe it will get better ammo once the patch goes live. So for now, I'm going to say that the Abrams has the weakest gun out of the bunch. Now, the armor is good, but not infallible. It is very good against heat, sure, but anything with 400mm penetration on an APFSDS shell is going to go through. There's also the big issue of high explosive shells to the upper frontal plate. This actually gives an interesting dynamic. You see, the T64B both has a much better kinetic ammo shell, it has the best APFSDS shell in the game with the highest penetration and as such will cut through the Abrams absolutely no problem, as well as having an upper frontal plate that is immune to the Abrams, making the T64B in pretty much most aspects superior to the Abrams. However, the T64B is inferior to the Leopard 2K, which stock gets a 650mm heat FS shell, which has no problem cutting through the T64B. That same shell, however, has problems cutting through the Abrams. It can't go through the turret, and it can sometimes go through the lower plate, but even then it should be unreliable, turning the M1 Abrams superior to the Leopard 2. The problem is, if the matchmaker doesn't change, it's going to be mostly Russia and Germany on one team versus the US and the UK on the other team. And that's when you are going to have problems. Now of course we can't forget the unique feature and benefit of the ammo racks. Aye! Guys, we're still alive. We're still alive. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. We are still alive. The ammo blew out. The ammo blew out, but we're still alive. The Abrams is one tough tank. It is very, very hard to one-shot this thing. Even with the incredible penetration and shell performance of the T-64B, it's most likely still going to take two shots to take this thing out. Even ammo racks don't take this thing out. This makes it a very tough tank. Very, very tough indeed. So, so long as you don't venture out alone and you always have some teammates besides you, you can do some damage without losing many tanks. So, the final verdict. Is the M1 Abrams worth it? Yeah, it actually is. You see, this is a very well-rounded tank. There isn't one particular area where it doesn't perform well in. You could argue for the gun not being the best compared to what is being introduced, but you have to keep in mind, you're not going to be facing only those tanks. You're going to be facing T-64As, you're going to be facing Kampfpanzers, you're going to be facing some T-54s even still. And against those, oh boy, the Abrams is going to club. It's really only the T-64B that you have to watch out for. So once the patch drops, this is going to be one of the tanks on my list that I do definitely want to get my hands on. And once we have some playtime and experience in the actual live game, I'm going to make another review and see if it still holds through. But until then, this is all you're going to get. Hold on, don't, don't go just yet. You know what time it is? It is time for photo of the day! This is a segment where I present some of the f of the pictures that I post to my Instagram account at the Mike Boom. Wink wink. This is a old screenshot from the day that the Japanese tech tree, tank tree was introduced into the game. As you can see by the face of Tojo here, he is rather depressed to know that even after all this time, over a year now, Japan is still nowhere near getting any kind of competitive top tier tank. It makes him very sad inside. Oh, I'm also going to be streaming more. Yeah, I actually ended up streaming for 7 hours on... Sunday when the dev server went live. Two hours of panzer meters because the dev server wasn't going up in time. So yeah, I streamed for seven hours total. It was bad. But I am planning on streaming some more, so head over to twitch.tv slash boom. Not sure when the next stream is going to be, but well, I'll announce it on Discord. Which by the way, join the Discord! 
Anyways, lads, hopefully you have enjoyed this quick overview. Well, I say quick, it's been over 15 minutes already, hasn't it? Hopefully you enjoyed this overview of the M1 Abrams. Hopefully I have been able to take the hype back down just a, just a notch. Just a notch while still showing you that the tank is capable at the same time. Just lower your expectations a little bit and the Abrams will perform just fine for you. But in any case, lads, this has been it for today. My name is Michael Boom, and thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky Take a deeper breath and give it time You can walk the path among the lies With your shattered frame of mind Or is that you could always stay We can wait right here and play Until somehow